Hello, Orange Hills family, and to all of you who are watching online. And a big happy Mother's Day to all of you moms out there. We're so glad that you're joining us today. As always, we want to encourage you to stay connected with us throughout the week. There are a few ways to do that. You can visit and like us on Facebook, you can follow us on Instagram, or you can visit and subscribe to our YouTube page. That's where you can view all of our church's worship services and children's lessons. And lastly, you can visit our website at www.orangehills.net, where you can learn more about our church and its ministries. It's also where you can visit our online giving page to support our church and our missionaries. Over the past two weeks, our church has been able to bless some of our county's awesome health care providers through our ministry to frontline workers and first responders. This last week, we were able to shift gears a bit and provide dinner for some of Orange County's finest at the Brea Police Department. We are so excited about the response we've received from both our church family as well as our surrounding communities. Because of your incredible support this week, we are providing meals to the Orange County Police Department, the Tustin Police Department, as well as the emergency room doctors and nurses at Mission Hospital in Laguna Beach. What a privilege and honor it is for us to be able to bless these incredible men and women. And we want to do even more during this crazy and uncertain time. So we're asking you to join us in prayer for this vital ministry to our community. Please pray that God will continue to open doors and give us more opportunities to be a blessing throughout Orange County. Please also be praying about how you can partner with us. We believe that God has called us to be the church and to do our part to show his love to all during this crisis. Please know that during this time, we are here for you. If you need anything, just give us a call and we'll be there for you. Remember, all of us at Orange Hills are praying for you and we love and miss you. Now let's all take a deep breath and turn our attention back to God as we continue to worship him together. One, two, three, four.
Hey, Grandma. Um, just wanted to um, send you a quick message um, and tell you um, happy Mother's Day. I hope you have um, the best day that you can with you know everything that's going on. Um, wish I was there with you to give you a big hug um, and love on you in person, but this is the next best thing. So um, just wanted to tell you happy Mother's Day. I love you so much. We love you and think about you all the time. You're not alone. You're always with us in our hearts, in our minds, um, and in our spirits, in our prayers. I pray for you every day. Um, so just really wanted to tell you, you know, happy Mother's Day and I love you from the bottom of my heart and can't wait to um, to see you again, hopefully soon. So I love you, happy Mother's Day, and I'll be talking with you soon. Bye. Happy Mother's Day, we love you. We love you bunches, 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 bunches. bunches, and bunches, and bunches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Hi everybody, it's Jeremiah and Eden here. Um, just wanna wish you all a happy Mother's Day. Um, our mother is Dina. Uh, she's a nurse at UCI Medical Center. And uh, one of my favorite things about her is how supportive she is of us. And one of mine is that she never gives up on what she's doing. She never gives up. I hope you all have a great, great, happy Mother's Day and uh, hope to see you soon. Bye. Happy Mother's Day, Orange Hills. A uh, special shout out to my mom, Martha Kurilishi. I love you, and I'm truly blessed to be raised by you. Good morning, Orange Hills Assembly. I wish all the mothers, the amazing mothers, a beautiful, majestic, happy, wonderful Mother's Day. And I also want to take a special moment to thank my wonderful, beautiful mother, who's the queen of my heart, a amazing and happy Mother's Day. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Proverbs 31, 29. God bless you all. Well, good morning, Orange Hills. I just want to wish all of you a happy Mother's Day. I hope it's a wonderful one. And I want to give a special shout out to the wonderful mothers that are in my life. From my wife, Marcy, who has given me such wonderful support. And not only that, she's the mother of my children. And to my mom, who is Lucinda Putnam, who is the most wonderful mom I could ever ask for. I just praise God for you every each, each and every day, Mom. And for my stepmom, Rose, I praise God for you too. Have a blessed and wonderful Mother's Day. Good morning, Orange Hills. We just wanted to wish you all a happy Mother's Day. And Mom, we just wanted to say we love you very much and appreciate everything you do for us. You strive every day to bless us and make our lives easy and fun. Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of you moms. And to my mom, Beverly Schultz, you are loving, inspirational, and beautiful inside and out. I'm blessed beyond words that God picked you to be my mom. Happy Mother's Day. Hi everyone, we want to say Happy Mother's Day to all you moms and that you hope you have a beautiful day. Also, we want to especially say Happy Mother's Day to mom. We want you to know we love you and we appreciate everything you do for us because we know that it's in your heart and that thank you for praying for us and always giving us the love and kindness and just being there. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Love you. Love you. Hi, Orange family. I hope you're all doing great and staying healthy. I wanted to wish a very happy Mother's Day to all you beautiful women and an extra special happy Mother's Day to my mom. She's so kind and always puts everybody before her own self. It's been so awesome to see you grow and open yourself up and let God use you in new ways over these last few years. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Mommy, for taking care of us. Thank you, Mommy, for taking care of me. I love you, Mama. I love you, Mama. 
my orange pills. Happy Mother's Day. Just want to take a second and say I love you, Mom. Thank you so much for pouring into my kids, for pouring into us, and do the amazing things that you do for us. I love you. Happy Mother's Day from North Idaho to my mom, Joan Shaver. Love ya. Good afternoon. Just wanted to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day at Orange Hills Assembly. One in particular, my mother, Ilda Alvarado. Mom, you've always been the anchor and the backbone of our family, and for that I thank you. From the heavens to the earth, Dad, Rosie, and I wish you a happy Mother's Day. We love you, and again, happy Mother's Day all to all the mothers. Hey, Orange Hills, I just wanted to say happy Mother's Day, and happy Mother's Day to all of my church moms out there. And I have a special happy Mother's Day, and that goes out to my mom. Without her love and support and all of her prayers, I wouldn't be who I am today. And for that, I want to say happy Mother's Day, Mom. And I hope you have a good day and a blessed day. And to let you know that I love you very much. And my brother loves you just as well. Good morning, church family. It's Javern. I want to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day, especially my mother, Veronica Clues. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. I love you so much. I want to thank you for all the unconditional love that you raised me with. You've made it so easy for me to love and to love unconditionally. I want to thank you also for the most wonderful gift you could have ever given me, my six brothers and sisters. I love you so much, Mommy. I'm so glad that God made me your daughter. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. I love you. I just wanted to say Happy Mother's Day to all of the moms in the church and to say to my mom, you are the most amazing woman that I know and I just wanted to thank you for opening up your home and your life and your love and giving me an entire family. So thank you very much and I love you. Bye. Hi Orange Hills, it's the Lynn Girls from San Jose wishing you all a Happy Mother's Day. We hope that you are as blessed as we are to have a mother that's also a great friend. One, two, three. You just call out her name And you know wherever she is She'll come running To see you again Winter, spring, summer, or fall Mother's Day. We love you, Grandma. We love you. Bye, Mom. Good morning, Orange Hills Assembly. I'm just um, wishing you all a happy Mother's Day. I hope you have a great day. And I just want to thank my mom for always being there for me and my family and telling her how much I love her and thanking her. I hope you guys have a great day and happy Mother's Day to all of you. Happy Mother's Day, Orange Hills moms. Just wanted to wish you guys all a wonderful day. I wanna say a shout out to my mom. Thank you for being a Christian mom and always guiding us in the right direction. Always being there for my kids and my family through everything. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Mom, happy Mother's Day. Love you, bye. Good morning, Orange Hills, and happy Mother's Day. I'd like to wish a very special Mother's Day to my mom, Mary Rutherford. And I just want to let her know, Mimi, we appreciate you so much and everything you do for us and how you take care of all of us. We don't know what we do without you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for being a great mom. <laughs> I would like to wish a happy Mother's Day to all the women of Orange Hills Assembly and especially to my mother, Gail Roberts. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. Mwah. Even though none of us are able to be together and enjoy our normal service for Mother's Day, <laughs> I just wanted to say a happy Mother's Day to all of the moms in the church and a very special, oh my god, <laughs> sorry, very special happy Mother's Day to my mom, Julie Gibson. We love you, Nana. Locus. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day.
Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. We wish we could be with you on Sunday to celebrate your special day. And I want to give a special shout out to Melody in Colorado. I hope you're having a great time celebrating your special day. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Hi everybody, I just wanted to greet all the ladies and all the mothers in Orange Hills a very happy Mother's Day. Uh, and to my own mom, Maria, I wanted to greet you a very special Mother's Day, Mom. I love you and I miss you. I just want to tell you I appreciate um, all the times um, you're there for me, especially with me being so far away right now. Uh, I wish I could celebrate with you, obviously, but um, I hope you have a very special day regardless and I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. Bye, love you. Hi everyone, I wanted to give a quick Mother's Day shout out to all the wonderful moms of Orange Hills Assembly. I wanted to give a particular shout out to my mom, the wonderful Maria Mijares, who taught me how to live life constantly with just kindness in my heart and helped me to understand that every single day on this earth is a blessing. So thank you, mom. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Hey, this is Gabe. Uh, to my mom and to my wife, I want to greet you a very happy and blessed Mother's Day. And likewise to all the mothers out there at Orange Hills. God bless you all. I miss you all so much. But you know what? God's with us all. And happy Mother's Day once again. Thumbs up to all moms. Hi. Just want to say happy Mother's Day to my grandmother, Carol. Hi, Grandma. Just want to say thank you so much for being a mother to me and a grandmother to me. And just all the wisdom and love you poured into my life. I'm living an amazing, blessed life because of you and your prayers. And I will see you after COVID-19 is over. <laughs> Mother's Day, Mommy, and Happy Mother's Day, Grandma. We all love you with all our heart. And we are very glad that we go to church. And we're very grateful that we could have church on the TV. And we all hope you have a good Mother's Day. We love you all. Mwah. Mwah. Hi, Orange Hill ladies. I just want to wish everyone a happy Mother's Day. I hope you all have a blessed day. And I miss you all. Hope to see you soon. And I also want to wish my mother, Patricia Juarez, a happy Mother's Day. Mom, I thank you for everything you do for me. Thank you for being a blessing to my life. See you all later. Bye. Happy Mother's Day, church. And I want to wish a very special Happy Mother's Day to that one special saint I get to call Mom. Mom, you have always been that godly encourager and nurturer to me. You've always believed in me, even when I didn't think I could do it. You always inspired me to continue moving forward. And you've instilled in me a deep love and reverence for God and His Word that has sustained me through many difficult times. I have the unique privilege of getting to call you Mom, and I am so thankful. I love you, Mom. I pray that this Mother's Day is filled with God's best and all of His many blessings. Happy Mother's Day. Good morning, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Just want to say Happy Mother's Day on this day and hope you have a great day. I want to tell you I love you. I want to thank you for being with me through the good times and the bad, which there have been quite a few. But you've gotten me through it and I couldn't have asked for a better mom. And I hope you have a very blessed day. And all the ladies there at the church or on the video, I want to wish you all a very happy Mother's Day and have a very blessed day. Love you all. Thank you. Bye. Happy Mother's Day to all the women who love and care deeply for others. Mom, thank you for loving me always for having provided for me at no matter the cost, and for continually showing me that laughter is good for the heart. I love you and I'm missing you today. Hi Orange Hills, I just wanna say happy Mother's Day to all of our amazing moms at church, and I wanna give a special shout out to my mom, who's so kind, so loving, so dedicated to the people that she loves, and just dedicated and loving towards everyone. So happy Mother's Day, mom. I hope you have an amazing day. I love you forever. 
Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Super thankful to have you through the tough times to help me get through and also through the good times so that I can enjoy them with you. Uh, I love you so much. I can't imagine life without you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the women in Orange Hills. I wanna say a special Happy Mother's Day to my mom. Thank you for always being so supportive and loving to me. Happy Mother's Day, I love you. Hello, Orange Hills. This is Kyle from the Walkwoods family in LA. I just want to wish all the women there a happy Mother's Day. Um, I want to wish my mom a happy Mother's Day as well. Um, I just want to thank you for everything that you do for me. I love you so much. Goodbye, everybody. Stay safe. Good morning, Orange Hills, and happy Mother's Day to all. I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy during this time. Love you. Hugs to everyone. Mom. Happy Mother's Day. I miss you, I love you, and I hope you guys are staying safe. Give Jay a big hug. Love you guys. Good morning, everyone, and a very special greeting and happy Mother's Day to all of you moms out there. We hope that you enjoyed our special presentation today. That last greeting, for those of you that don't know, was my brother Jeremy. And those were our kids with our mom, Susie, up in Washington in that picture. And I know that my mom is watching this, so I want you to know, Mom, that I love you with all of my heart. You are truly one of the strongest people I know. And I want you to know that your unconditional love and encouragement have seen me through some of my darkest days. Even still today, your spontaneous text messages and phone calls just to tell me you love me seem to always come at the perfect time. I'm so sorry that I won't be able to come up this week like I had planned, but know that I love you and will see you soon. Happy Mother's Day. Now I wanna make sure all of you moms in the Orange Hills family know that we tried to get all of you included in this video. But for some, it was just not able to happen because we weren't able to get a hold of some of your loved ones. So for all of you, I personally want to wish you, all of you, a happy Mother's Day. And being that it's Mother's Day, I was thinking about something this week. I started to think about the diversity that is represented in the Orange Hills family. I mean, we have single moms who are doing the job of two parents. We have young women who want to be moms in the future. We have moms who have experienced the empty nest and we have moms who are about to. We also have moms who have received children through adoption. We have moms who have blended their families. We have mothers of wayward children. We have moms who are working full time and raising families. And we even have moms who are celebrating their very first Mother's Day with a child this year. And lastly, we have women who don't even have their own children, but still have invested their lives in being a spiritual mother to so many who have needed it over the years. So I just want all of the women in our church to know how blessed we are to have all of you in the Orange Hills family. And I want you to know that I pray for all of you and I praise God for all of you every single day. You are all a true blessing to us. Today, I, I promise to keep this very brief because I want all of you men to spoil your beautiful women with a great lunch and a lot of gifts. But last week, we started a new series called Quarantine Conclusions. And in this series, we're talking about some of the lessons that we can learn from the crisis that we've been in. Last week, we talked about the importance of prayer and how if we really wanna see things change, then we need to cry out to God in prayer and ask him to deliver us. And this week, we're gonna talk about two very important things that I've been reminded of during this crisis. But there's a twist. The two things that I'm gonna talk with you about today are actually things that you and I learn from a very young age. And if you're like me, then most of it was learned probably from your mom. And there's no better time to be reminded of it than now as we go through this time of uncertainty and trial. So on this Mother's Day, Let's look at two things that we learn about God from the model of a mother. The first thing that I've learned that I want all of us to cling to in this time of crisis is that God is love. You know, I had the privilege of teaching the children's church lesson this week. 
And by the way, if you didn't watch it, you really need to check it out. There's a special guest that we invited to come in and give the word of encouragement to the kids this week. It's very cool. But in that lesson, we talked about the fact that the way that moms love their children is really a reflection of God's love. Moms, some of the things that you do and just the way you love your kids is absolutely amazing. And what's so amazing is that it comes to you so naturally. And that's why love is really the only way that I can describe it. You do things like read a book to your child at night. And when they ask you to read it again, you do it over and over and over the same book, the same night. And you don't even skip any pages or parts. The way that you kiss those owies and magically make the pain go away is astonishing. And let me just tell you, only the love of a mother could cause you to use your own saliva to clean your child's face. And I know that sounds gross, but for some reason, as a child, it's the most incredible thing that you can do to bring healing and comfort. You bandage all kinds of wounds, from the physical ones to the emotional ones. And as you heard from all of the many children who participated in this service, it continues to go on in our adult lives. And it's that display of love that helps all of us better understand the love of God. That love that was compassionate, tender, consistent, sacrificial, and selfless, it all points to God. But even though moms are so good at showing God's love, the truth is a mom's love isn't perfect all the time. And because of that, the Bible tells us that there's only one love in the entire universe that has what it takes to transform a life that is moving in the direction of the world's standards. It's the kind of love that not only God has, but that he wants to put into our lives. It's what Romans chapter 5 verse 5 talks about. It says, we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. See, what that means is that a heart filled with God's love is the only love strong enough to totally transform a life. And I know we've all heard that God is love probably a million times before, but what I want you to know is that there is a big difference between hearing that God is love and actually experiencing God's love for yourself. There's a big difference. In fact, my prayer for each and every one of you is the same prayer that Paul prayed in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 5. It says, May the Lord bring you into an even deeper understanding of the love of God. Church, this is so important today, especially as we continue to go through this crisis together. The bottom line is that without a deep understanding of God's love and without a firsthand experience of God's love, you will go through life in one of two categories. You'll either go through life as a non-Christian who's going through life searching for that love, or you'll go through life as a Christian who operates on what everybody else tells you about being transformed without actually being transformed yourself. Either way, you will never be able to live your life to the fullest, the way that God intended you to. In other words, in order to experience life to the fullest, you have to experience the love of God to the fullest. Let me tell you how God loves you. It's found in 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. It says, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. How many of you would agree that's true love? A love that is not just willing to die, but willing to die for you. I want you to get this today. The truth is, it's very easy to minimize how much God loves you. Like I said before, some of you are here and thinking, God is love. That's great. God loves all his creation. That's awesome. But let me tell you something. It's deeper than that. It's more personal than that. What it means is that out of the seven and a half billion people who live on this planet, God loves you. You see, it's an intimate, personal, and sacrificial love. The truth is, a lot of people go through life, even Christians, thinking God is love, God is love, and it's nothing more than a general statement to them. And that only can happen because they're never really truly experiencing his love in a personal way. But what I want you to know this morning is that that's what God wants for each and every one of you today. 
He wants more than anything for us to draw closer to him, especially in the difficult days and the times of crisis in our lives. That's the first thing I want you to know and understand today. But not only do moms reflect God's love, they also show us that God loves to protect and to comfort us. Isn't that a comfort to hear right now? And the reason we know this is because that's how moms are. Has anybody else out there experienced how protective moms can be? My guess is that all of us have, and that's because moms are constantly on the lookout. Let me assure you of something today. You will never hear a mom say to their child, hey, go on out and ride your bike really fast and, and just leave your helmet at home. Oh, and while you're riding, see how many times you can shoot in and out of the street. I mean, come on, trust me, you're never going to hear them say that because moms are protective of their children. See, the truth is your mom can be the nicest woman in the world, but if you mess with her children, you better be able to run real fast. You don't want to mess with a mom. And here's the thing, within that protection, we experience great comfort and compassion. In fact, many of us grew up understanding the compassionate side of God because of our moms. This fact is proven every day of the year. Let me ask you today, when children hurt themselves messing around outside, the first thing they do is run into the house. And who do they yell for? Mom. Why is that? Because kids have learned that dads are not the most understanding people in the world. They aren't as compassionate as moms. In fact, nowhere in, in history are you going to find recorded that a kid ever ran into the house and asked for dad. And that's because if you run into the house and you go to your dad, the first thing he's going to say is, come on, you're fine, just shake it off. No pain, no gain. But moms are just built differently. And I praise God for that. And this idea of comfort and protection, it's so consistent with how the Bible describes God. The kind of God that he wants to be in your life. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, we've all heard it. Cast your cares on him. But I love the Living Bible translation of this verse. It says, let him have all your worries and cares, for he is always thinking about you and watching everything that concerns you. Now, this really brings up a thought-provoking question. Why don't we trust God? I mean, think about this in your own life. Why don't you trust God with your worries and your cares? Probably because of what we talked about in the last point. Because maybe you've never truly experienced his love. See, the truth is, when you haven't experienced God's love and you get in trouble or you're lonely or broken or hurting, you look to other things to fill that void in your life. Maybe it's an unhealthy relationship or things like drugs or alcohol. But see, when you really trust God, that's when you feel safe enough to cry out to him in your times of desperation and need. That's exactly what David did time and time again in the Psalms. In Psalm 40, 11, he cried out to God and said, Do not withhold your compassion for me, O Lord. May your mercy and your truth always protect me. Let me tell you this morning, when you've experienced God's love firsthand, this intimacy with God that we've talked about, it's a lot easier to go to him in your time of need. And moms, just like you, when you hear your child say, I need you, you are there. It's the same with God. God loves that from his children. Why? Because he's a God of love and he's a God of comfort and protection. But here's the thing. Neither of these things matter if we don't respond to them in the right way. And that's what I want to talk about next. See, the first way that you should respond to God's love in your life is to receive it. See, the truth is, if, if you're a Christian, you need to do this every single day. Every day you receive God's love by connecting with him, by focusing on him, by worshiping with him, and by aligning your life with his desires for you. In other words, it's not just a one-time thing when you receive God as your Savior. That's just the beginning. So you receive God's love when you make that decision to transfer your faith to Him. It's when you say, I've been living my life my way, but I'm ready to do it God's way. I want that personal, intimate love that we've been talking about. And once you've made that commitment, you continue to receive His love every day after until He comes again. 
And the great thing about that decision is that when you receive God's love, you also experience his forgiveness. That's how it works. The Bible's very clear about this. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says this, But God showed his love to us while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Don't miss this. God said, I love you just the way you are. So you receive his love and you receive his forgiveness. And the moment that you make that decision, all of heaven rejoices and celebrates and there's a big party. How do I know this? Because Jesus tells us three stories in the Bible about this very thing. He tells stories of a lost coin, a lost sheep, and a lost son. And all three of them end the same way. When the coin and the sheep and the son were found, a party begins. As a matter of fact, Luke chapter 15 verse 32 says it like this. We had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours, he was lost and now is found. What an awesome promise to know that the moment I am spiritually found, God rejoices. God rejoices because one of his creation moved from being just his creation to being his child. Now, do you understand the difference? Everyone is a creation of God. But it isn't until you put your faith in God that the Bible says you move from a creation of God to a child of God. Galatians chapter 3 verse 26 says it like this. All of you are God's children because of your faith in Christ Jesus. See, that's what it is. In other words, you're not God's children because you attend church. You're not God's child because you've participated in the offering. You're not God's child because you're a nice person. And you're not God's child because your parents grew up in church and you lived in a religious home. No, you only move from creation to child because of your faith. And when you make the decision to hand over your faith, that's when you will receive and experience his love in a very real and personal way. The second way that you should respond to God's love is simple. You need to reflect God's love with your life. In other words, you give the love that you've received to others. And let's be honest today. There has never been a time in history when people needed the love of Christ more than right now. In these times of crisis and trial, people are desperate for love. And here's the incredible thing about God. When you're obedient to that calling on your life and you give that love away, you don't just meet the need of that person, you also meet God's expectation of you. And that's when you experience the love and the blessings of God like never before. I've said this so many times before, but it's still just as true today. There are a lot of people who make Christianity a lot more complicated than it is. They think that being a Christian is this whole list of do's and don'ts. But church, I want you to know, when Jesus had just a little bit of time left on the earth, the Bible says that he grabbed his closest followers together. His hours were numbered. His moments were limited. And when he gathered them together, he didn't leave them with some big list of complicated things to do. Instead, he said something very simple. It's found in John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. He said, now I'm giving you a new command. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. That's it. It's that simple. There's no need to make it more difficult than it is. It's called the greatest commandment. You and I are to love God with all that we are, and we're to love others in the same way. This last verse is really a clear summary of what I'm talking about. It's found in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2, and it says this, Live a life filled with love for others, following the example of Christ, who loved you and gave himself as a sacrifice to take away your sin. See, in this verse, Paul is encouraging all of us to live a life filled with love for others because that's the example that Jesus gave us when he died on the cross and showed us his great love for each one of us. So in closing today, during this unprecedented time in our history, when the world around us is struggling and in a constant state of fear and anxiety, you and I need to remember that God is still here in the midst of it all to love us, and to protect and comfort us. And as we receive that incredible love and strength, we should respond by giving that love away to others. Will you bow your heads with me this morning?
You know, if you're watching this morning and you've never asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, first, let me tell you, I am so happy that you're watching today. But I also want you to know that God loves you. And not only does he love you, but he wants to have a relationship with you. You're that important to him. And the good news this morning is that you can move from creation to child right now in this moment just where you're sitting and watching right now. All you have to do is just agree with me and say, God, I want a relationship with you. I want to receive your love. I want to experience your forgiveness. So please come into my heart and into my life and forgive me of all of the things that I've done that have been displeasing to you. And Lord, from this day forward, I want to experience your love like never before, and I want to experience life to the fullest. It's in your name that I pray. Amen. And God, thank you for all of the moms that are watching today. I pray a special blessing over all of them and all of the amazing women out there today. I also want to thank you, Lord, for your love for each and every one of us. Be with us today and give us opportunities to reflect your love and to give it away to others, especially in these times of difficulty that all of us are in. We ask all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus and everyone who agreed with me said, amen. Thank you so much for watching today and for worshiping with us today. God bless you to all the moms and to all of you amazing women out there. Remember, I love you, I'm praying for you, and if you need anything, all you have to do is contact me and I'll do what I can to meet that need. God bless you and have a great week.